Ukraine has already received from its friendlies several cutting-edge weapons and technologies to help in its fight against Russia. However, among all the ammunition that has been supplied so far, what is probably going to be the most effective in the time to come may very well be the GLSDB deadly missiles, which despite having never been deployed previously, still have the potential to turn the wave of war. How? Let's explore the capabilities of the GLSDB. Javelin, Stinger, and Starstreak, among many other portable anti-aircraft missiles, have already been delivered to Ukraine by NATO. And although these weapons do have the power to drastically alter the course of a battle, a few months ago, the delivery of HIMARS helped in stopping the Russian attack. The invaders suffered significant losses, but then why did the need for the GLSDB arise in the first place? The GLSDB stands for Ground Launched Small Diameter Bomb. However, what you might not know is that it is also a perfect illustration of how you may create a fundamentally new weapon by fusing together two very different systems, which should have already been retired. For use in the intercompartments of stealth aircraft, the US Army created a small-sized GBU-39 SDB bomb in the early 2000s. The body of the SDB bomb was extremely slim and extended to fit more comfortably inside the aircraft's interior. It is just around 7.5 inches in diameter at 12 feet long when the wing is folded on the back and attached to the belly. The bomb's 285 pound weight and 36 pounds of impact resistant explosives packed into a very tough steel casing enable it to penetrate reinforced and armored targets. High accuracy, inertial, and satellite navigation are used to guide the projectile, and on more sophisticated variants, the munition has a probable circular deviation of no more than 5 to 8 meters. In 2008, the first bombs were sent to the Army. However, now the more modern GBU-53 Stormbreaker, which has a combination guidance system, millimeter active radar, semi-active laser, and passive infrared homing, permits engaging moving targets, is replacing the outdated GBU-39 SDB bombs. For the Afghan war, more than 45,000 GBU-39 SBD bombs were created, and more than half of them are still in reserve. In the middle of the 1990s, Boeing proposed an innovative use for the munition that involved fitting them with rocket boosters and launching them from the ground, transforming the gliding air bomb into a short-range cruise missile. Thus born was the GLSDB system, which is simply an SDB bomb attached to an M26 rocket. The GLLSDB is launched with the M142 HIMARS or M270 MLRS at a high angle to reach the maximum altitude. The rocket engine is then dropped and the bomb opens the wing and starts to glide towards the target. However, the bomb is not just capable of gliding, it also has the ability to change direction and descend repeatedly. The GLSDB also has huge trajectory changing capabilities. This munition's capability to turn 180 degrees and hit a target 45 miles away from the launcher was demonstrated in a test in 2017. And this is helpful in densely populated locations where there are few safe launch directions. With these powers, the launcher is able to attack several targets at once and in different directions. The maximum range of targets is often 90 miles, which is a huge improvement over the GMLRS missile's earlier shipment to Ukraine. Compared to the high explosive warhead of the GMLRS, the GLSDB striking effect is more focused locally, but it is also far more effective against buildings and reinforced structures. During testing, this bomb managed to breach a reinforced concrete wall that was 5 feet thick around an aeroplane bunker. On the contrary, GLSDB's flight speed is lower than the ballistic GMLRS's flight speed, making it more susceptible to air defense. The less complex planning trajectory, lower flying altitude, the capability to conduct trajectory maneuvers, and the small size of the bomb itself, however, balance this. Also, the bomb is only $40,000 in price, considering the disposal of munitions from decommissioned airplanes and practically free rocket engines. In contrast, the GMLRS missile is estimated to cost between $100,000 and $160,000. It is important to note that only a few hundred GLMRS were enough to get Russia on its back foot, and here, the low cost of the GLSBD makes it possible for Ukraine to get thousands of these missiles. This means an infinite barrage of rockets that have double the range of a GLMRS. The GLSDB's only drawback, however, is that it's still a fairly new weapon, and the US hasn't had enough time to mass produce it yet. But on the other hand, there isn't really a need to produce anything. Take the rocket engines for the M26 missile from one storehouse and the GBU-39SBD bombs from another. When they are connected, the GLSDB is ready. 
So would the Russian defenses be able to handle what is coming toward them? We are soon about to find out, as the conflict in Ukraine depends on how the bombs, specifically the GLSDB rocket bombs, are used. What do you think about the potential of the GLSDB? Tell us in the comments below. This brings us to the end of the video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing you more content like this. See you next time!